as from today, Kapurum Jat, female circumcision is banned from Katon to Koina. Nyakai, Nyakai, Epurum Koina, Yokebet Katon, Mofamati Gambia, Nyakalit Katon. The biggest challenge right now in this country is the religious leaders. That's our main challenge. We at Safe Hands for Girls also thought it necessary that we need to bring in scholars together to clear the misconception that Islam has with FJF. So to be able to bring together these scholars and to have the backing of the Supreme Islamic Council, for them to have an understanding or for them to have debates, a dialogue regarding this issue and come to a consensus that indeed FGM is not a religious obligation is quite powerful. The, the only program does not address the issue of FGM directly, neither in affirmation nor in negation. I have never seen any tradition, neither in com confirmation nor in negation, to the fact that the Prophet's own daughters were subjected to the practice. Women are taught from a young age that we have to be patient, we have to be strong. But this is a pain that we don't want to continue. This is a pain that we don't want to continue living through. Knowing what I went through and how much um, Allah doesn't even let us pierce our bodies or tattoo our bodies or hurt our bodies, that same God can't allow us to mutilate a female's genital and keep them from having full sexual desire. You to be salal salam wahna ne chir bobu nyu dag moi chiru banne moi chiru yek moi ben nyarel bam moi wahna ne yek yek bobu banne ko bobu niti banne ko chijabaram jabaram di banne ko chimom lo kamne ne akala bo kamne ken amu sen senu ayi ko nit la darar wa la dirar. This is a statement of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam which became a principle, you know, a principle guiding the application of the Sharia that there, one should neither harm oneself nor harm others. La darar wa la dirar. So where it has been established that the practice of female circumcision involves harming the woman because body parts are being removed, then this should be stopped completely. You're the leaders of our country. You're the ones that people listen to. And that's why we brought you here. Not to disrespect anyone, but to ask you, to plead with you, to help us. And help us change this. We would do anything to strengthen Islam in this country. But this is one part of our religion that affects us as women. And we are pleading, we are actually begging them to do something about this. Ya tala dino e nyanto di mensita dindi wala musola kebala funding ke wala dina wala bela nyanto di la Because of the way the public perceives it as an obligation from Islam I think it is best on us to let them know that Islam doesn't allow harm it has a no harm principle and as such it doesn't allow us to torture our children and FGM is torture and barbaric and for that reason I think our children deserve better than being tortured. The most complicated issue when it comes to campaigning against FGM is that religious component of it. And I just don't know. But it just means that our work is not done. We are still going to continue. We need to find a way to reach these people and change their mindsets. And that's what we've started and that's what we're going to continue to do.